Hello there and welcome back to my workshop. Our new project is a chest of drawers for storage here in the workshop. Uh, this is show number two. Uh, in our first episode, what we did was work on our sides. Um, see them here. Did a lot of uh, mortising and tenoning with the rails. We also cut some grooves for our panels. So we're in good shape there. While you were away, I uh, made uh, the one center style that we needed. I squared our mortises and I also added a uh, rabbit in the back to house our backboards. It's a piece of scrap and they will be shiplapped along the back like that. So uh, we're in good shape there in this show. What we're going to do is taper the legs. Uh, we're going to taper the inside faces of, of each leg. You can see I've marked the waist there. And uh, then when we've done that, we're going to make the, the panels. But before we, uh, before we get started, let me just show you something. The uh, front legs are half inch longer than the back legs. Now, why would I do that? Well, few things in this old house are level or square or plumb. And this floor is fairly level until we get up to this wall right here. And then it dips up rather dramatically. So uh, by making this leg along the front longer on my chest of drawers, it will be nice and level. So that's the idea there. I didn't want to use leg levelers. I don't like those things. So uh, I'm a woodworker. I can always, uh, if I relocate this, cut the legs uh, to the proper size for their new location. So uh, I think that's it. We're ready to go here. I'm going to pull this apart and we're going to get set up to saw these uh, tapers. Okay, we have our legs all ready to go here, and uh, I'm just going to get right to it. Uh, going to saw these and then uh, plane them right to the line. Let's see how we do here. Well, not bad for a first try. <laughs> quite a workout and uh, now we're going to be using the plane to do the rest okay we're back had a chance to reset here and get ready for the next step which as you know is planing to the line and when we're uh, finished doing that what we're going to do is saw our second taper and plane to that line each leg gets two tapers and you can see the first one here, and there's the second one. And I've been very good about marking the waist. I want to make sure that I don't saw on the wrong side of a line or put a taper where it doesn't belong. This is not the time to start making mistakes. I have my uh, planing stop here, it's the end of my bench, and uh, that way I can plane directly off the end without hitting anything. I'm going to start with my number four, which happens to be set for a, a thicker shaving, and I'll just knock the tops down a little bit. And then I'll switch to my number five, which is set for a finer shaving, and sneak right up on the line. Um, 
One thing I want to show you here, check this out. This is where my taper stops, comes up like this, and I'm going to mark this with little crosshatch marks just so uh, I can sneak up on it and I can see that I'm coming up on that line and I'm going to land straight and square right on that line when I'm done. So I think we're all ready to go here. You ready there? Mm -hmm. Okay. I need my glasses. Okay. Here we go. the line there and I'm on the line there Whew. okay I'll buy that now the next step is going to be uh, sawing it right here Where? sawing my second taper Okay, now I do this three more times and we're done. Mm -hmm. I have great legs. Four of them, in fact. <laughs> the project so far is turning out really nice. Have a look at this. Nice, graceful tapers on the legs. Last time I tapered legs, I used my table saw on one of those tapering jigs. But I have to tell you, doing it with hand tools is a whole lot more fun. There's something that's just uh, a lot of fun about sawing to the line and planing right up to the line with a sharp hand plane. It's very therapeutic, it's very relaxing, I highly recommend it. So the next step is going to be making these panels. But before we get to that, I want to talk about the finish for just a moment. The, uh, this is made out of poplar. And the tool chest is made out of poplar, and it's finished with Danish oil. And the plan was to finish this with Danish oil. But uh, I got to thinking, and I was wondering if I could do something a little bit different. And uh, while I was pondering that, I found myself staring at something that gave me a good idea. And here it is. Some of you may recognize this. This appeared briefly in Japanese Toolbox Show number three. I made a bunch of small Japanese toolboxes and not so small Japanese toolboxes, different sizes, different finishes. And this by far is my favorite. It's a two-toned look. I call it the Country Squire look after the Ford uh, station wagon they made years ago with wood paneled sidings on them. And uh, I just like the look a lot. This is milk paint. And there's just something very nice about the wood grain and the paint together, they uh, sort of complement each other. So we're going to do the same thing with the chest of drawers. Put this away here. So we're going to paint this part and the panels are going to be the natural wood look. Now, do I have to use poplar? And the answer is no. Let me show you here. I have this beautiful piece of figured maple, tiger maple. You can see it there. And I have been saving it for years for just the right project. And I think this is the right project. 
I have just enough, it's just wide enough and just long enough to get four panels out of it for the two sides that I need. So the next step is going to be cutting the four lengths that I need from this piece. I've scribed the line over here for my saw cut and I've notched it with a chisel. See that? Um, where? Oh, yeah. And what I'm going to do here is just finish up notching and then we're going to saw it. So give me a second here. Okay, and then just work with the pencil so I can see where I'm going. Okay. Cover your ears. getting better at this. So I need three more. And here we are. Obviously I leapfrogged ahead. I couldn't resist. I had to do two of them and put a uh, side together to show you. I'm using shaker flat panel instead of a uh, raised panel. But I think I have enough going on here with the painted frame and the figured wood. I kind of like the traditional sort of shaker look to the whole thing. And on the back here, you can see all I did was put rabbits around the edges so that my panels would fit inside the grooves. So what we're, we're going to be doing now is I'm going to show you how I did those rabbits. Now, there are many different ways to make rabbits. You can use saws, you can use chisels, you can use special planes, um, and a lot of times it depends on what kind of tools you have available to you. Uh, that affects your methods. There's a couple different kinds of rabbits. There's long grain rabbits, there's cross grain rabbits, there's rabbits that you will never see, and rabbits that you will see when you finish your work. So uh, let me show you what I do. I'm going to show you two. One is a uh, cross grain rabbit and one is a long grain rabbit. We'll do the cross grain first. Here's a panel. I've got everything marked. My uh, depth and my width. And I've uh, put a kerf here along here for my saw. I'm going to be using a saw and a rabbit plane to do the cross grain rabbit. So uh, here we go. past my depth lines here. Okay, I've got my kerf established and now I'm going to use my block plane, my rabbit block plane, to remove the rest. Uh, it's a block plane, rabbit block plane, because the blade goes all the way across the sole, like that. Now normally, 
if this was straighter grained wood, what I could do is take a chisel and just put it in here and pop out a lot of the wood and just finish it up with my rabbit plane. But with this wildly figured wood in the grain direction, I wind up chipping out things I don't want to remove. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, plane it all out. So uh, here we go. Now I don't have a fence on my rabbit plane, but that's not a problem. I just tilt my rabbit plane up and run it like that. Use my kerf as a guide. And as I go, I tilt it down closer and closer to level. Okay, I've established a wall there now. Check the depth here. Okay, that's pretty tight. I'm about three shavings away from having it fit the way I want it. But that's just the, what I want it for now. I'll fine tune that when uh, we get ready for the glue up. So let's move on to my long grain rabbit. I'm going to change how I hold my work here. Okay, that's not going anywhere. Now for my long grain rabbit, what I'm going to use is my plow plane. It has a depth stop. It's got a fence. It has a 3 8 inch plane iron. And my rabbits are 3 8 of an inch wide. So it's got all the things I need to create my rabbit. So let's get going here and see how it works. A little bit more. OK, 
Okay, that's really snug, but again, that's right where I want it. I'll fine tune it when we glue it up. So, um, that's how I do rabbits. Uh, and that's as far as we're gonna go this time around. Next time when we come back, the first thing we're gonna do is glue these up, get these leg units done. So that's gonna be exciting. Thanks for stopping by and see you next time. Wasn't that great?